The navigation display, ND, can present the pilots with a lot of useful data to assist in the safe operation of the aircraft. Because the ND gives the pilots a visual presentation of where the aircraft is in relation to airfields, nav aids, etc., the operation of the aircraft is also made easier. In this module, we will use the captain's ND. There are five display modes available on the ND. They are selected by the mode selector on the EFIS control panel. There are three basic navigation display modes, which display in the background a 360 degree compass rose. Note, for training purposes, the other information has been dimmed. A 90 degree segment arc. A map plan with the north at the top. Before moving on to look at the individual modes, let's quickly look at some common information. The ground speed GS and the true airspeed TAS are permanently displayed on the top left corner. Below the speed indications is the wind data, wind direction, true north, wind speed and an arrow to indicate the wind direction with respect to magnetic north. Here wind from 60 degrees at 52 knots. The aircraft magnetic heading is given by a fixed yellow lubber line against the moving compass rows. The selected heading or track, if bird is selected on, is shown by a blue triangle or blue numbers, if out of display range. This is similar to the PFD. Actual track is depicted by a green track diamond. Range marks are displayed by white dotted lines, while range values are depicted in blue. The display range can be adjusted using the range selector. Select 320 mile range. You can now see more of your flight plan and that the range values have changed accordingly. Let's study the ND individual modes. The ROSE ILS mode is a raw data mode providing standard localizer and glide slope deviation bars. Other information is displayed to assist you. An ILS course pointer, ILS information. Select ROSE VOR mode. The ROSE VOR mode is another raw data display. On the display, there is now a course pointer and a lateral deviation bar for the VOR. In this case, VOR 1. To have this display, a course must have been selected on the MCDU radio navigation page. Like ROSE ILS, the information about the tuned frequency, the selected course and which nav aid, here Papa Alpha Sierra, is displayed in the top right hand corner. Let's now display the VOR bearing pointer. Select VOR 1. No, click on ADF VOR selector 1. Notice that there is a white VOR bearing pointer and VOR information associated with the pointer. This information is available even if a course hasn't been selected on the MCDU radio navigation page.
the number one pointer is represented by a single line. Let's change the selection on the EFIS control panel to display ADF1 instead of VOR1. This is achieved by moving the number one ADF VOR selector to ADF. Select ADF1. The white VOR bearing pointer has been replaced by a green ADF bearing pointer. The VOR information on the bottom left of the display has been replaced by ADF1 information. Notice that the selection of the pointer has not removed the deviation information for VOR1. Now let's display the ADF2 bearing pointer. Select ADF2. The ADF2 bearing pointer is now displayed represented by a double lined arrow. At the bottom of the display there is information on the selected nav aids. Notice that in common with most things on the aircraft it is number one on the left and number two on the right. Notice the tiny underlined M beside the nav aid information which indicates that each ADF has been manually selected by the pilots. You will learn more about the nav aid selection in the navigation chapter. To see the effect of the ADF VOR selectors click on the forward arrow to select both VOR bearing pointers on. Click on the forward arrow. The two white VOR bearing pointers are now visible. You have seen the two raw data displays. Now let's look at the ROSE navigation display. What is now on display is a map view of the area surrounding the aircraft. On the EFIS control panel, the range selector is set at 80 miles which is the distance from the bottom to the top of the compass rows. The green line represents the flight plan that is programmed in the FMGS. This will be discussed in the auto flight modules. The information contained in the top right hand corner of the display relates to the two waypoint. In this example the two waypoint is Papa Alpha Sierra. The information is track two waypoint, distance to go, ETA, estimated time of arrival at waypoint. The normal mode for the cruise phase is the arc mode. Click on the forward arrow to select the arc mode and a range of 160 nautical miles. Using the push buttons at the top of the EFIS control panel, additional information can be displayed. For example, airports that are in the displayed range. Select Airport. A green light illuminates in the push button. On the display, the airports contained in the aircraft's database and within the area are shown. This is a useful feature when considering diversions. Select Non-Directional Beacon. All the non-directional beacons contained in the database and within the display range are shown. Select VOR DME. All the VOR beacons contained in the database and within the display range are shown. Select Waypoint. The display has started to become very cluttered now that all the waypoints are shown. Select 40 nautical miles. As you can see the display is a little less cluttered. Now let's look at the final display mode. Select plan mode. In this mode the flight plan legs are shown on a true north orientated map. The center of the display is a waypoint. 
the aircraft is displayed in relation to the waypoint. In the example shown, the display is centered on waypoint Papa Alpha Sierra, and the aircraft is heading towards that waypoint. Deselect waypoint. Now let's increase the range to 320 miles. Select 320 nautical miles. Since plan mode is centered on a waypoint, the aircraft symbol may or may not be displayed. To demonstrate this, we have shifted the display for you and centered it on the waypoint Golf Echo November. Notice that the aircraft symbol has moved towards the top of the display. In this module, we have introduced you to the display modes available and some of the indications on the ND. You will also practice using the various display modes in the Auto Flight and the Navigation chapters, the Flight Management and Guidance Computer FMGC Trainer, and during your simulator sessions.